Okay, today we are going to do some uh, old IBM tube technology and actually, uh, Carl, this is your module, right? This is a uh, s tube module from the 70, do you know? Uh, 705, so... And uh, Ken has reverse engineered it, as usual, and uh, he thinks he has found what it is. Oh, you have a schematics of it. Uh, so so what, what what is it, Ken? So basically it's a, a debouncer circuit for a keyboard input, like from the key, the key on the console or um, a relay contact. So it, it's kind of a simple circuit. Darn, no uh, flip-flop or counter. And then to, to do power the whole thing, Ken has reverse engineered, so we need all kind of weird voltages, minus 130, minus 60, plus 140, the input is 48 volts, so I have my complete stack of power supply here, I cannot quite do 130, but uh, this one is on 120, uh, and then we'll put 260 volt in series to do the other 120, and tap the middle for the minus 60. Uh, and then the, the voltage are a little high, so I uh, went and got my beautiful uh, resistors here to reduce the voltage. And uh, where is it? This is a, another beautiful box from Ken. It has the input button that we want to debounce and the output light. And uh, we have an osmoscope. Don't forget the filament transformer. And the filament transformer. <laughs> Test it both ways. One way there'll be a voltage, one way there won't. That's nine. I wonder if these probes fit in the socket. Nine, seven, six, five, six point eight. Six point eight. And you put all these on a tube tester first, right? Don't have a tube tester. <laughs> well, I could have brought one. Okay. You just go to the local drugstore and use their That's tester. right, yes. You gotta bring it in a paper bag though. That was required. Oh yes. It is glowing. The tubes are all glowing nicely. So we know that at least one filament works on all, all the bulbs. Alright. This has more than just one debouncing circuit, right? He has a there's couple five. of them. There's five? Yeah, yeah. And, and can, can you explain what, what the tubes do here? So, um, f five tubes are used for the five debouncing circuits, and then those go to five cathode follower buffers, which use half a tube. So that explains the other three tubes. So there's two tube types, both dual triodes. And then we are only going to test one section because there was only one that was complete, right? Yeah, a few resistors have fallen off over the years. All right, All right. We'll repair that later when we have the full computer. And then the, uh, so these racks were, were inserted and there's a hole, the connections are at the bottom. All right, so we have never powered it up. <laughs> if it explodes, this will be our last video. This one is a weird supply, it's really meant to be uh, turned on via GPIB. Okay guys, are you watching? I'm, I'm turning on the 60 volts. Oh, you, you're able to get over voltage? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Alright, so... Now put on your plus 120. Plus 120 on off. Uh -huh. Ready with the button back there? Yeah. Okay, nothing's gone bad. It's on, in. And your 30 Constant volts voltage. On. Yep, it's happy. Here it's happy. Uh, okay. Okay. 
So then you want your uh, input voltage? That's on, isn't it? Yeah, so I just test here. And, whoop, okay. Okay. 13 volts, and I need to put a button? Yes. It went up. Oh, it did something. It went up and down. Oh, but that's the input. The output didn't do much. The output didn't do much because it's on a by 10 uh, divider. Um, no, you don't have it hooked to the instruments. I should. Or at least not to the counter. Right. Well, not to the counter, but I have it okay. hooked up here. So this is not sensitive enough. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So what voltage is that? Not much. It's 5 volts. Okay, so now... Is that 5 volts after dividing? Yep. Yeah, we could read the direct um, output. So now everything's powered, so you have to be a little careful. But I put that to 10k. And I put that to, let's say, 1k. And yeah, it went down. So it's, it's almost direct. And what voltage are you getting for that? You're, you're, so do you think that it's actually doing anything, or have we just it looks it looks anything? like it? Well, we want to. So wanna now, we, when you know, I need to trigger on something. Right. Hopefully, the switch isn't like so good. There's no bounce. But. Triggering on. What's the trigger menu? Source one, edge, slope up. So that should be good. Switch is pretty good. <laughs> so, so it looks like my NAND bulb isn't working then. Right, but your switch is too damn good. So your switch is too darn good. It has no bounces. We'll zoom in close. I mean, because right now you're on a human kind of time scale. What you want to see is real, you okay, know. We're, we're seeing a delay, which is good. That shows right. there's actually something. Right. It takes one and a half milliseconds. Yeah, that's yeah. about what I figured. Right. Well, that's pretty good. So the, so the, the circuit here. actually works. Shoot sign signal or yeah. Here, try, try it again. Well, put it on auto. It will re-trigger. Put put it on run. Uh, it's run. Yeah, there you go. Oh, you got some yeah. intermediate mounts there, which is still good because it's... There you still, go. Oh, that's a nice one. That, that's uh, kind of a mess. Uh, uh, no, that's superb. You have like a, a good deal of pulses and it transformed it into a, a nice one. There you go. Here's your picture. Look at that. Yeah, it, is it, it, your sparks are longer than the debounce interval. It, it did, but it, it did not... It wasn't annoyed by this nor by that. It made a clean out. There's a little bit of noise, but... Mm. But the, the output is not many volts. I think that's why your neon bulb is... Uh, no, no, no the, that's a different circuit. The yeah, output comes directly from the plate, so it should be getting 100, 120 volts. And the output I'm reading is from the driver, from the current yeah. driver? Yeah. Oh, from the second tube. I would say that's a good result. It's not, it's not that spectacular, but... And now we want to get that neon going. It certainly did the, uh, certainly did the trick. Okay, so now I have put my pulse counter here. So if I do start and I press the button, I should only get one count per button press. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it counts clean pulses. Now we have to do it on the, so that's the output and let's, let's watch the input. So unfortunately I, I cannot 
monitor the two at the same time, the input and the output. But now I'm connected to the input, and if I press, well, it counted 13 pulses. So this is the some, oh, sometimes one, sometimes a whole bunch. Right. right. So that so that would be the problem of hooking up. They switch directly to some digital electronics, right? He, some, sometimes he gets one pulse, sometimes he gets 20 pulses. Mm -hmm. So the thing works, transforms a bunch of unpredictable pulses into clean single shot pulses. That, that's for the circuit, a nice circuit. All right, well, that's about it <laughs> for today. And we're not done. We have not, not done. We have the mod of shorting out the one meg so that the LED will light. L the neon bulb. Yeah. Was, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, uh, Ken was distraught because its neon bulb didn't work, and so I pulled one out of my reserve, and now we have the neon bulb connected to the output. Ken, push the button. So, so this neon bulb is connected to the high voltage plate and. When you push the button, it lights up. There we go. Oh my goodness. They were used as, as internal status indicators for debugging. Man, this is the most impressive demo ever. On, off. Incredible. <laughs> and without bouncing. <laughs> and without bouncing. <laughs> Which we can't really tell. All right. Okay, let's see if we can do it. So I have should have everything in the picture. Let me reset the count over here. So that's the input. So that's the yeah, it's gonna be bouncy. That's the bouncy one. We should we should get many counts per try. Go for it. Push it. Yeah. One count only. Two counts only. Well, it's, it's nice and clean. Now you got three. A whole it's bunch. Like Ten. Bunch. Right. Okay. So now let me change and get back to the output. Okay. Enter stuff, and then I have to right and plug it into output. Yes. Look at that. Now is your your um, decade range correct? Uh, Sensitivity. I think so. Here the output is lower, so yeah, uh, I just don't want you to blow up anything. I think I can actually. I don't need anything here. Okay, this is going to be our final demo for the day. So I'm hooked up back to where I'm reading the output pulses. This is input, this is output, slightly delayed. And we have the uh, neon indicator. And it didn't even register anything. Are you stopped? I am stopped. All right. Measurement error, this circuit works. One, there you go. Two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it worked ten times, therefore it works all the time, right? Guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, that's that's a, a lot of hardware to do a simple function here. And then we can, you know, we can catch it in the act here. Oh, that's okay. It's such an amazing phenomenon. We have to do it all at the same time. So we a I, I have a clean nice. one where we you know, we just use the wire instead of using the <laughs> your switch is a little too nice. But the wire is, gives dirty pulses and it comes out clean. Yeah, that was really worse using all that hardware to do it. Fifty plus watts. <laughs> It's, no, it cannot be 50 watts. Yeah, it is? It is. You, you can feel the... Yeah, 27 oh, watts. 50, 50, 50, 50 watts for five of the circuits. Yeah. Right. So, so in, so, in, so in, in, in all honesty, it would be only, only oh, a, a mere 10 watts to, for the debouncer. Oh man, yes, it's warm. <laughs> So
So seven or whatever five. What what time frame like, is that? It was like nineteen fifty four, I think. It was the yeah. business. Fifty five. Fifty five. Okay. Sure. So we so start powering down. Yeah. What? Yeah. Since we haven't burnt anything. Celebrate. I can't see the power on that, but perhaps you can. All right. 